What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We're back on another episode. Picking up right where we left off with last week's episode, creating a pretty neat sort of one-off exhaust system for the radial engine that is going in the radial flyer. We are going to try and finish this, get everything fully welded, get the motor and transmission back in there with everything connected and really be able to stand back and visually see how cool this is gonna look. Massive shout out to also Carl at Make It Custom. Uh, you guys may have seen that he's been over here for a couple of weeks and it was so incredible to have him over here and um, you know, just, just love hanging out with the guy. Did a, an amazing metal shaping course uh, over um, two days and that was really cool as well. And, an amazing crew of people that we had within the class itself. Having said that, let's get into it. Right, so you may have noticed that we have the main motor and transmission now on the stand. Uh, reason for that is just plumbing the stainless, it's really nice to kind of have everything attached to it, the starter, the mid plate, uh, all the little bits and attachments as, that are gonna be there. Um, and this is just helping me sort of you know, guide the stainless through all those areas. Right away, I've already noticed, uh, I thought I had, you know, from measuring kind of enough clearance between the mid plate and these pipes, and I don't quite have enough. I don't really like how it's, um, it's really close to this back plate here. You know, I kind of want to be able to get my finger in between here. And... Oh yeah, I need to take that 
15 mil off the end of that now. Then that should bring me into about there. Still won't really work. <sighs> How can I do this? It's not going to allow me to do a tighter one. Is that recording? Mm. Yeah. So this is this is the dilemma I'm working with right now. This is the bottom one that comes. It will travel underneath the head and this is the main one that needs to you know have the most clearance to ground as well so we have ample amount of clearance between the head and it can't really go any more you know like a, a a bigger radius and i don't like having radiuses like this where they have sharp edges i think everything should flow nice and you know perfect unfortunately i don't have really tight radius bends i only have 90 degree ones and I'm just trying to figure out if I can make this out of a couple of bends or maybe I can pie cut this piece out and maybe add a piece in and it might not be as drastic, which I think is possible, but I just need to make sure that I keep the same inside dimension between both to, uh, to allow clearance. So I'm just trying to work that out. It's not a huge deal. I could weld this up. You don't even actually see it and it would look fine. It's just, I don't know. I just really like things to, to flow nicely and I feel like this is quite a sharp angle for all the other really nice elegant angles that are on this motor itself. So I want to try and figure out how to do it properly. I just don't want to fuck it up. either. It's going to be the easiest way to do it though, isn't it? I'm going to hold it back up. See what it looks like. And I just don't know if I'm a real fan of the way that looks, you know, it almost looks, uh, Sort of kind of half half done, so I want to make sure I um, I do it properly. Sort of kind of stupid idiot. For it, I'm gonna pull this guard off too. Enough of that. I tried it. Oh. Nice. You know what would be great in this. Uh, in this setup is um, those little blocks that you click together. Um, I forget what the, the company is that started doing them, something engineering, but they, they have like little blocks that you can click together and spin and you know, you, we could essentially make this entire setup and then it gives you all your radiuses and all your measurements just like that. Like it, it's, such a no-brainer little setup. I mean, there it, obviously it takes a little bit to set up, but it'd be really neat to try and use a use a pair. I was even thinking about them for when we get to the the motor is basically done for Ben's Roadster, and um, we want to put that in, and I want to make a really neat set of custom headers for that as well, and and the same for for my um, my Roadster with the flathead. But with his, it'd be really cool to sort of create a set. So. I might have to do ICE, I think it's ICE engineering or something, because I think it'd be really handy to have them for, uh, for intricate stuff like this, rather than kind of doing the guesswork, which I'm about to do right now. Took the guard off the grinder. I tried. I tried to use it. I may go back for all those who uh, 
you say it's dangerous. I need to try and line these up nicely. So I'm gonna want to maybe use a piece of tape or if I can just line it up. Be good if I could clamp this in here somewhat. That I can do. This I can grab. What we need to try and achieve here, I need to almost do the same with this piece and then we're gonna hold them together and see if I can do a little, do a little dance. guys are thinking it'd be amazing to have a bandsaw, a vertical one, to be able to just slide these through, which I totally agree, and that will come. But for now, we will try and line these up. I will file finish these all square, but roughly, you want to be in the ballpark. So, if I get this guy, it was around, if we could get it to about 65 mil in, inside, so that's what we need to try and put a piece in. So, I can then measure the inside and the outside, do the same on here, and hopefully, hopefully, we can get a decent enough bend. No oh, gases. So I know that this is 44.5. So let's get this guy. So now that's given me a clear indication of where I can make my measurements. Perfect. Okay. So Let's see if I can match the radius with this guy. some new LEDs. Okay, and that's going to be a tricky one. Roughly like that. That's my center. Something like that. Yeah, this is where I'd really like to have that bandsaw. Straight through. How could I modify this guy? A little 
little plate. You can build a little plate for it. I wish this went up more vertical. What's stopping it? That guy. If I were to take that Allen key out, what would happen? Okay, we may have solved the issue with the bandsaw for now. I've seen lots of guys do this before. I think they even make attachments for them, but if I just run it like that, there was a little stop that wasn't allowing me to go all the way. It stopped there and I just removed it in the spring too, if I can take that out. Now I'm sort of working with this little area here. So what I could do is create a little plate that would essentially maybe fix to this with a little plate this way and another one that way, making sure it's square to the blade. And this will allow me to run it through like a bandsaw. All right, I'm gonna make a plate that will let us do this. So, I need some steel. Clean cut. Now let's try and do the other one if we can, and fingers crossed we'll uh, we'll have something that will work.
something there. I don't know. I don't know. All right, another cool little tip I wanted to show you. I have mentioned these before. These are your, I guess they would be called like a T-bar clamp, I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but they are used as like a, uh, a hose clamp and they only have like a certain amount of movement between each one. They're not like a traditional style hose clamp where you can kind of wind them in. They're a really nice stainless quality setup. And I use these as my tacking clamps. So what I do is, I run a set of calipers, I get my center, and I drill three holes like I've done on this one here. What that does, it allows me to stick it on to two pieces, clamping them down nice and tight, and it keeps everything nice and center, and uh, you know, or not center, central, where you want it. And now I have three provisions here, or three little windows where I can then tack the stainless and then I loosen it off, slide it off and, uh, and you know, away you go. So they're nice and cheap. Tacking clamps work really nice. There are like a couple companies that have them where they use like a vice grip, which are really cool too. And you can kind of just put them around, clamp the vice grip and they hold them in place. The only thing with that is vice grips aren't light. And if you are trying to, you know, not have too much weight on something, these work incredibly well, and they're super cheap to use. So, what happened guess, to the pardon? What happened to the bandsaw idea? Um, bandsaw idea works. It's just I can't figure out the angle, so I um, haven't figured that out yet.
Okay, that'll work. Let's see if we can take this into place. Gonna have to. I think that'll work. this Yeah, I don't know.
All right, so it's still, it's not what I like, but I'm gonna live with it because it's gonna be functional. You're not really gonna see this part anyways, but honestly, if I had a really, if I could just jump into a catalog, get something sent down right now with a really tight radius, I probably would do that. Having said that, I'm working with what I got, and I, I think once it's all welded together, It'll, it'll flow quite nicely. There's just a little bit of a peak on there that is sort of just a, a no-no when I'm trying to do stainless, but I've been kind of battling it a little bit to really try and get that tight radius there to obviously have ground clearance. And I've got ample amount of ground clearance now, so I think it's, it's gonna be, I'm gonna live with it. And I think once it's all together on here, it'll, um, it'll, it'll look the part. But this is, it's just me being fussy, that's all. I may actually replace the, the studs with bolts as well and get some little ARP little studs that would work. That way I can, uh, I can sort of disconnect it and slide it down, um, which will allow me to have a little bit more clearance when I'm removing it from our mid plate. There is clearance there, but it's just maybe not enough to what I'd like. And it'd be pretty easy to, uh, you know, with the ARP, they got that really nice little hex head on the end. So it'd be a little bit nicer to tighten these up. Fun thing is, is we get to do that all over again, but now I have something to reference off of and measure. Okay, so we are going to live with that. And then what I'm thinking, I had a 90 degree, we're gonna run a 90 degree out of here into 245s and we'll try and replicate the same bend so they sort of match. But what I'd like to try and do now is get this one up into here. So we need to run it into that guy. So I'm going to grab two 45s and just put them together just to see what, what kind of angle we're working with. If we're anywhere in the ballpark. go in more, square, leaving that gap bigger, and then you can get that one and then figure out the measurement. This one's going to be pretty easy, I think. Shouldn't say that yet. They're always a little bit difficult. But I want to make sure that I have nice amount of clearance. There is clearance there, but I'm going to trim off this to start our bend earlier so that it'll fall away so we'll have more more of a, a gap between here so that nothing's gonna be close. Uh, unfortunately, the way we've designed it, not unfortunately, it's just, you know, we're working with the design that we're making and we do definitely have some, some clearancing um, areas where, you know, st there's some tight tolerances, I mean, not clearancing. There's some tight tolerances and um, I think that's where when these get ceramic coated and we do make a couple heat shields especially for right here where the spark plug is. We can run, run a high temp spark plug boot that goes over top of these. Um, or yeah, it's like a sheath that goes over your spark plug wires, uh, as well as we could pick up these two bits and make just a small little kind of plate that goes in between. Um, that will help obviously dissipate the heat away too. Um, but we'll kind of get everything finalized, fitted where it's gonna go, tacked into place, and then those areas will definitely, you know, we'll rectify those when we need to do them.
see how well those tacking clamps work. So I have that little hole that gives me a window and I can just put a nice little tack and it keeps everything square. This was magnetic. I think that kind of sucks. Okay, so now that we have both these mocked up into place, it's time to get this guy to this one here. So that mid plate's gonna sit about here. We do know we have a little bit of room. What I'd like to do is try and get this to travel down and then immediately into two 45 degrees just to kick it over so it comes down here. Once it's placed down here, then we can put a 90 degree that will go down along the bottom of the head and then we can fix it into this one here. So So Um, how can I do this? I'm going to need you. Yeah. I'm going to need you to come over on this side and hold that like that. And you're going to have to tell me when it's, when it's square. Or we can tape it if that would be easier. I almost need to just get a tack on it so we can hold it. Yeah. It's the other way as well. So turn that 90 degrees. Yeah. Right there. Yeah.
right, well, we have a couple more tacks utilizing our little tacking clamps that we made. Um, I just got to get one in here if I can. And I think, well, that's it, kind of last pipe. So it was, um, yeah, definitely a head scratcher in a few areas for sure. It was very challenging, um, but it was a, a challenge, you know, definitely worth taking, I'd say. But let me just jump into this one here. And I think that, that is it really. So what I might do now is just remove these clamps um, and kind of just give everything a little bit of a cleanup. Just hit it with some metho and then uh, yeah, just stand back and just take some measurements. Um, I think prior to removing anything from this, our little jig that we have created, uh, I would like to sort of fabricate up a little mount. You know, the, the bumper is going to sit sort of here and I'd like to have maybe something that kind of sits down in here or maybe even underneath. I don't know. I feel like underneath you might see it. I'd like to hide it maybe behind the bumper. So maybe even this way and the, the bumper will kind of sit like that. But what I'd like to do is I don't want to make it hinder where we're going to have the, the door coming down, but I would like these all to be sort of individually uh, mounted together and then we will be able to sort of um, pick these up off the back of the bumper or bumper bracket or something and we'll have a, a bushing in there that will allow it to, you know, to do the vibration that it wants to do. Um, I had considered putting in a couple of little like real small flex pipes just to allow everything to have a little bit of flex. Um, but I think over the, the kind of the distance that they are, um, with that little mount, I think it should be okay. Um, but I would like to have maybe the exhaust, uh, I'm kind of thinking out loud here. I almost want the exhaust to not be mounted to the body, but maybe the exhaust is mounted to something of the motor. Maybe I can make a little bracket just so that everything will move in sync. Um, and then, you know, we, our cradle will be rubber mounted. So it obviously has moved for the, for the uh, torque in that, but um, if everything could kind of go as one, maybe this would be all right. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna tack a couple more bits here, then I'll pull these off, and then we'll uh, give everything a little clean up, stand back and just have a look. All right, so after a little bit of a cleanup, just making sure everything's you know straight and parallel where they need to be, uh, I just ran around and did a few more tacks just so when we do remove everything, it'll all stay in its place. But I think I was getting a little bit ambitious on this video and really wanting to make sure that um, I was gonna try and fully weld it all and, and back purge it and have it fully done. But, it, it took a lot of time, uh, honestly, way more than I kind of thought. Um, having said that, I'm super happy with the way it's turned out. I really like the sort of the simplicity of it, yet it's still obviously, you know, there's a fair bit going on. And it was definitely a bit of a head scratcher with certain angles, but I was able to, you know, kind of keep to that um, 90 degrees, 45, 22 and a half and uh, that kind of helped me the whole way. So having this transmission jack was amazing because 
we can level out and perfectly square and level the motor. Uh, and then, you know, that obviously helps with creating all these bends. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with the way it's come out. So I think I'm gonna leave the video there. In the next one, we will sort of take all this off. We will back purge, we will fully weld it all. I need to make some mounts still. So I'm gonna make some really neat sort of low profile mounts that will kind of just keep all these together. You know, you don't definitely don't want that back bumper to be really nice and parallel and have some really nice lines. And then, you know, a few tail pipes are kind of off by a little bit. So before I remove this jig, I will end up running a, um, a little mount across there and then uh, everything can be sort of removed for final welding. Um, but yeah, really pleased with how it's come out. I think it's gonna be really neat. So, and then in that video, you know, a lot of you guys have mentioned like mufflers and heat and all that stuff. So we will cover um, those as well. I think what I will end up doing is making a provision for the bottom and having a little threaded um, bung in the bottom that will house a few um, kind of baffles that will slide into the tailpipe. So that'll take kind of the sting out of it if it is too loud. Um, as well as this will be getting completely ceramic coated. And for those areas that are quite close to the head, um, you know, we will have either heat shields or run some, um, some exhaust tape. So, or not exhaust tape, but the, the fiber. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was really kind of, you know, fun to do. Um, but yeah, I love the way it looks. I'm really excited to see it in the van and kind of that undershot of seeing all six pipes kind of come out the back. So it's gonna be pretty neat, but um, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit notifications, and we'll see you next week when we finish this up, get it in that van, and see what it's gonna look like.